everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 211 of the Love and Stitches podcast. It is the first episode of 2024, and since it's a brand new year, we're making some changes to the podcast format. Hopefully it will be things that you will be uh, excited to see. We're excited to incorporate it and kind of refresh things. I feel like I do this just about every year at the beginning of the year. So we are adding in sort of a mini travel vlog into each of our episodes. You're still gonna see projects first because first and foremost, this is a knitting and crochet podcast. So we're gonna start with that. So that's not going to change. Um, but then we are going to incorporate our travels into things. We're doing so many, I think, interesting and amazing things. And we haven't gotten to show that off on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. I think in a way that it deserves. So every week you're gonna see something a little bit different. Um, today, since I'm actually in Tennessee at my parents' house and we're not technically traveling, I'm gonna be showing you how I get my projects organized to go on like when we're on the road. Uh, after this, when we leave in a couple of days, we are not planning to come back to Tennessee again where my parents are, where we have like more things stocked up, all of our stuff, all of my yarn. We're not planning to come back here for at least six months, I think. So it will be interesting, I hope, um, <laughs> to share all of those things. And then in other episodes, you may see uh, things we're actually getting out and doing, whether we're um, exploring different cities or exploring different parks. Uh, we want to incorporate those things in and occasionally do maybe some like sit downs talking about, you know, how do we do this in the van? So let us know if there's anything specific that you would like us to feature and show. I know we're still due to share a van tour, so that will likely be coming up next week. Um, we've also decided to remove the question segment of the podcast, but still ask your questions in the comments, and I'm going to do my best to answer them like via, uh, not text, but like answer them in the comments and still um, help out in that way. You're also going to see that I've taken away the tip of the week. Um, i sometimes find that I'm running out of tips to share. Uh, so I will maybe still be sharing tips, but in like a short form video um, a format, which I think will be even better because then I can actually demonstrate things. So that's pretty much it. There's a couple other changes, some new graphics and things. Uh, very exciting, at least to us, um, hopefully exciting to you. This is gonna be a longer episode because it has been three weeks since I last shared anything with you. Um, and so I have lots to update you on with my projects. So go ahead and grab yourself something to drink, a project to work on, and let's get into it. First, I have a finished object to share with you. This is the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket. It is a pattern by Lucien Crochet that I modified. Um, so I'll tell you about my changes in just a second, but it is all done. And this was my Advent project for this year. Although I did not start this until December 13th. And I am very proud of myself because I finished it on January 1st, which means I finished it in 20 days which I think is pretty good. So if I had actually started it on December 1st, I would have been able to you know, keep up with Advent. <laughs> I think this is a great Advent project, something you can definitely do on the daily. So changes that I made is I did not use a main color in the original pattern. You do a main color row in between each of these colors. I might be making another one of these. This one's my second and I might be making a third one and actually doing it according to pattern. So I love how that looks. I've just not had any yarn that I was using for the project that had the main skein with it. So I just adapted it. Um, the other thing that I've changed is the gauge of the pattern. I tried with the original hook size and it was just too dense for my preferences. So I went a little larger on the hook, a little larger on the gauge, and therefore I reduced my stitch count overall. Basically, I just took off a couple of repeats of the pattern and I have those notes in my Ravelry project page if you want to do the same thing. And I was able to get five rows out of each of these 20 gram mini skeins. Some of these I have a ball, I, I 
think they're in the van and, and Kent has the van right now. He's taking it to get um, the brakes looked at, so I couldn't get that. Um, but some of the balls are like really small, like maybe a gram or two left. And some of them I had just a tail left, like that's it. So I don't know if they just weighed different things, the mini skeins or what, um, but I don't have a ton left over, which I really like because that means I used up most of the yarn. With my leftovers, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with them yet. Um, because I don't have the same amount from all of them, it seems like I'm probably not gonna use them all in one project, but I might just incorporate them into a magic knot ball or something in the future. Right now, I'm just, I'm not worried about it. It will just kind of go into my scrap collection. Now, I did do something, uh, sort of unplanned here at the end. This is not blocked yet, by the way. You can see that it's still curling on the edge. Once it blocks, it really grows a lot. Toaster has one of these blankets, and this one I've kind of intended for myself. It's a great just like lap blanket. It will cover my legs for the most part, um, or if I'm sitting with my legs like crossed, it will cover my lap, which is great. It's not a huge blanket, um, which is why it's named a baby blanket. <laughs> um, but what I did, um, at the beginning, so something to note is that you do need, if you're gonna do it this way where you're not doing the main color, you use the main color to chain. Um, and that uses up you know, a bit more yarn than for the whole stripe. So because I didn't have a main color, I used my first color, which is actually this one. I added this one on later. I used this color to chain and then I didn't have enough to do four, uh, five rows. So you can see this one only has four rows. I don't think it's that noticeable in the grand scheme of things, but it was a little more noticeable at first. So I started actually with this color, worked my way all the way up. And when I was getting to the end, you can see we kind of go back to neutrals, but they're a little bit cooler colors. Like they're, they're brown, but they also have a little bit of gray and a little bit of green. And this one right here, this one was actually the last color. It was color number 24. So it should have come after this one right here. And I thought, you know, it's looking really warm. It's looking like it would look really good next to this color. And I only have the one neutral down here. And I think that looks a little funny. I'd rather have two neutrals next to each other and like two neutrals to end. I feel like that kind of made a lot of sense. And then also because I only had four rows here, I wanted to do something to kind of blend that in. So I ended up adding this color here, uh, color number 24 to the beginning of my blanket. And since I had done, I did a regular chain and then I worked in the back of the chain, like in the butt, not the back stitch, but like the very back, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm describing that right. I'm not the greatest of crocheters. I don't know all the terminology, but I think that's correct. So therefore I had just a great, perfect, like two stitch or not two stitch, like two strand chain looking thing at the beginning. I was able to actually use that to just crochet right on top of. And I honestly don't think you can tell, like maybe if you really look at it, you could tell, look at the lights coming in. You could tell that this was not the start, but I don't think you can tell. So I was really proud of myself. And then I kind of had to figure out how to reverse like the pattern to make it chevron the other way, but I figured it out. So I was really proud of myself when I did that. That's a little bit, okay. So I lied on Ravelry and I said I'd finish this on December 31st because um, I wanted this project to be part of my uh, year in review for 2023. And I knew if I marked it on Ravelry as finished on January 1st, that I might get confused at the end of this year when I go to do my 2024 year in review. And I'm like, why is it saying that I finished this project in 2024? And it just didn't make sense to say I finished the project in 2024 when all I did was two rows. So I'm like, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna lie and say I finished it in, um, in 2023. So I lied on there and it doesn't really matter. Most of the project was done in 2023. So there you go, that's it. That's all I have to say about this one. I do need to block it. I don't know if I will before we leave because we have a lot going on. I have, I have to uh, prioritize projects that I'm bringing with me. I don't know if I'm bring, bringing this blanket with me at this moment. It may just stay here because I've already got some other blankets that I'm using in the van, but that's for me to decide later on in a couple of days. Next up, still in a Christmas bag, 
<laughs> when we get organized here later, I'm gonna be moving my projects into new project bags that will serve me well for the rest of my trip. Um, but I was working on this around Christmas. I have my World Champs socks. So this yarn is from the Little Wolf Knits. It is the World Champs colorway inspired by the Texas Rangers World Series win. And I'm making these socks for Kent. Aren't they knitting up really beautifully? I really like how it's turning out. So I have said before, I'm not a huge fan of blue and red used together. I just, or like blue, red, and white, I just don't really like it. And I really like this. I think it's turning out really, really pretty. So the cool thing about these is these are gonna be Kent's very first pair of hand knitted socks. So I am taking my time, my sweet, sweet time on these. I wanted to do them toe up because I wanted to give him the chance to try it on uh, to make sure he likes the feel of the foot and the, the width and the length and everything. And then also so he can test out the height of the sock. I think it's a lot harder to understand where the sock is gonna fall on your leg if you do it from the cuff down because you're not really sure where your heel is going to begin. So that's why I'm doing these toe up. It's not my usual way of doing things. Um, I am semi doing my perfect fit sock and the perfect fit socks are just a way of customizing socks for you. It's about measuring and doing some calculations and some increasing and decreasing to just get the best fit. So I'm stuck right now. Um, Kent has tried these on. He said he did think they were gonna be a bit tighter, but um, they looked like they were a, like a good snug fit, like the right amount of negative ease, at least visually. So we're gonna try this for him for now. I have 66 stitches for him. Um, and I am stuck because I need to figure out how long to go before I start increasing for his heel. And to do that, I need to take the rest of his measurements. So before we leave again um, to travel, I'm going to sit down with Kent, get a piece of paper, trace his foot, um, measure different parts of his foot and put it into my perfect fit formula. And then hopefully I can just knit and try on and knit and try on for him. So I've gotten what I think is gonna be the majority of the foot before I start increasing. I've done, let's see, 20, 40, 60, probably 70 rows so far. So I'm probably at that point where I need to start increasing before the heel, but we will have to just see later on. My Battenberg blanket has come back into the project rotation after I finished the crochet advent baby blanket. I switched back to this one as being sort of my project to focus on, but not for very long, and I'll tell you why. Um, let me first show you the, the blanket. This has been something I have been working on since June of 2023, and it's gonna be something that I continue to work on for a while because I've hit lots of different snags in this pattern. Um, not the pattern, sorry, with the yarn. Um, so this is the Battenberg blanket. It is a pattern by Sandra Paul. As always, I've modified things. I've made my squares around bigger. Um, I also have used an advent for it and I'm using the same yarn, a homespun house for my neutral colors. So since I last showed this, I believe I've added in all of these like bluey greens. Sorry, I know it's like too bright, so then it's too dark. I can't, so now that I have my lighting set up, I can't get past it at least easily to adjust the blinds. <laughs> So we're just kind of working with what we can work with right now. Um, but I've added in all of these bluey green squares. So all of these colorful squares are already finished. They're already worked up. And I've just got them, the rest of what I'm going to be doing in this Ziploc bag. So this is a Homespun House advent from 2022. And then I am, the way the pattern is written, I'm following it exactly, aside from adding that extra round, is you work your neutral square. And then after you're done with your neutral square, you attach it to the blanket while also attaching a colorful square. It is very, very cool and a totally new technique for me uh, for blankets, but I've massively under, not massively, I have underestimated how much yarn I was going to need. So when I originally did my calculations, I ordered six skeins of a homespun house. I still have two unwound, um, one wound up in here, and this is my third one. So I thought all was going well. I, I did the math. I figured there are 480 grams in an advent calendar. 
Is that right? Hold on, let's get our calculator out so I can just make sure I'm telling you this right. The math ended up being wrong anyway, but this is where my brain started. So 20 grams times 24 is 480 grams. So that's how much yarn I had for all the colorful squares. And you do one neutral square for each colorful square. So basically half your blanket is the neutral squares, half is the colorful squares. So I thought, okay, great. I'll need 480 grams for the neutral squares, which is true but I forgot about attaching them. <laughs> so I was like, well, 480 grams is about five full 100 gram skeins of yarn. I'll make sure to get five of five uh, to join and then one extra skein for a little bit of insurance plus to do a border. So that was all, it seemed like a good idea, but what I didn't anticipate is that each, the way that this is joined is with single crochets. So it's not just a slip stitch, it's a full, basically a whole other full round and it uses up a lot more yarn than I expected. So once I got into, I wanna say, where am I now? Once I got into, I still might have not enough yarn. <laughs> I guess I need to finish out this third skein and see where I'm at, but I did these four rows so one, two, three, four, no, I did five rows. I did these five rows, not this current one I'm on, but these five, and I realized that I had already used up two skeins of yarn. And my entire blanket is 16 uh, columns across. So if five columns had already used two, is this right? No, four columns had already used two, and I have 16. That means I'm going to need eight. I still might not have enough yarn. I just, <laughs> I just ordered two more skeins. So I do have eight total, but I want some for the border. <sighs> I may have just realized that I'm still underestimating this. There's probably somewhere in the pattern that tells you exactly how much you're going to need. However, I have changed the size of the pattern, so that wouldn't have helped me in this case anyway. But for anyone who wanted to do this Battenberg blanket with an advent and then buy, you know, yarn for your other one, please note that you are going to need a lot more yarn than just doubling things. So I'm going to keep everyone updated with how my eight skeins go. So two more are coming to me um, from a homespun house in Germany. I ordered two more last week and they shipped already, um, but I am going to wait until they get here to go any further on the blanket. Because it's a hand dyed yarn, I know that there's just no possible way to make them match exactly. Um, Molly of a homespun house is so sweet and so attentive. She saw that I was posting on Instagram that I was ordering more yarn and so she said send me pictures as accurate as you can of your yarns and I'll try to match them. <laughs> so either way I'm going to wait for those to come in so then I can use those new yarns and kind of sprinkle them throughout the blanket rather than just going all the way through with my original six skeins and then having like the area over here be with the new skeins, I think it would be more obvious. This is a very tonal colorway so I think it will blend in nicely and then my thought, my hope was that I would have enough yarn to basically just use the new skein for about, I think I estimated like eight squares, and then I could use it for the border, because the border will be fine. It will be a different section. It's okay if it's a little different, but now I'm wondering if I might need all eight of those just to join, which would be okay. I could do something else with the border or again, order an additional skein. <laughs> this blanket takes a lot of yarn, but I think it's gonna be so worth it in the end. It's super, super beautiful. So this project is just gonna be on pause. It's not coming with me in the van. My thought is that I'll kind of make a, a little packet, like a big Ziploc bag with all my yarns, all my squares, the blanket, and then when that new yarn arrives, um, if I'm ready for it, I can have my mom pull everything and just mail it to me super easily so that I can work on it. We'll see how that goes, but for now, she's getting tucked away. I have added quite a few new squares to, or not squares, <laughs> hexes to my hexi blanket. So we have visited 
quite a few more states since I uh, last podcasted. We were in Florida, and I think you saw all of that. Um, previously, we had been in Georgia, but we actually went back through Georgia. And then we also went to North and South Carolina, although I wasn't able to get any hand dyed yarn from North and South Carolina. So that's on my list to do the next time that we are through. But I have added, <laughs> let's see how many, ooh, this almost smells like clean laundry. I wonder why, that's very interesting, it smells good. Um, I have, I was here last, you can see I've got a little, a little Christmassy charm in there. I'm gonna take that guy out because it's no longer Christmas, it's time to change. And I have added one, two, three, four, nope, wrong way. <laughs> I have added, oh, I guess I added here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I have completed the fourth ring of the Hexi. Oh, I didn't tell you what pattern it is. This is the Summer Fade Hexi Blanket by Mallory Crawl. Again, I have made changes on it. They're all in my Ravelry project page. The biggest thing you need to know is that I added a round to it and I, I put that information in there. And I'm also working this thing in like a circular um, way because I don't know how many yarns I'm gonna end up with or how big it's gonna be. So this purple one is Tennessee. It is the center. And all of these are yarns that I have gotten on our travels. So can you tell that it's like a hexagon? Like this is the top of the hexagon. And then here's another side. And then here's another side. It's getting pretty big. Like it's probably four feet wide, maybe wider at this point. So I don't know, I'm gonna do another thing all the way around. And then after that, I might start rectangularing it off. So the thing is, is that each of these rounds gets so much bigger, it gets bigger by six. So right now, currently, I'm looking at my project page notes, I have 61 hexagons. And I think the last, oh, I don't have this in here. Actually, I should add this. Um, each ring gets bigger by six. So the first, uh, you start with one hexagon. And then the next ring around is six additional ones. And then it's 12. And then it's 24. Um, so I think that's where I just was, right? So I started in the center and then six, 12, 18, sorry, and 24. So I just finished the one that has 24. So my next one will have 30 hexes all the way around. So that's gonna take me a good long while. <laughs> a lot of traveling. Um, I do end up getting at least one yarn in every state, that's the goal, but sometimes I get more, especially like when we went to Four Pearls, um, which has Emma's yarn, I got several mini skeins, which was really fun. So who knows how long it will take me to do an another 30 hexes, um, but then I might start to rectangular it off. I don't know. I might just make it a hexy. That would be an interesting shape. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but let me share the colors that I have gotten. I'm also upset with myself because I have been so diligent about posting on Instagram with a photo of each of these hexies. I number it, I tell you, I tag the place that I got it, I tag the dyer, I put the state, and it's been a really fun project to keep up with that. And then I also do the same thing in the Ravelry project page. I put it in a photo with a caption, with all that information, and then I also put it in the description. So no matter, like it should be for myself and for anyone else who wants to find these colorways, very, very easy to find them. And I forgot to put this one that I got in Florida on Instagram and on my Ravelry page. So when I got to the end of this ring, I was posting hexy number 60. And then I was like, wait, the math doesn't math. I should have 61 hexes. Why is my numbering not adding up with the actual number I have? And that's when I realized I forgot this one. So I need to go back through and renumber everything. It's easy on Ravelry. It's gonna be a pain on Instagram. Um, so I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet because I don't want to add in like a an A or a B because I'm going to continue numbering these for probably up to 100 of them. So I really want the numbering to be accurate. But anyway, this is a me problem, not an anyone else problem. But let's see what I've added since then. Hang on, my computer is like way down here. Uh, so the last one I believe... I showed, again, it's not on here, it's actually Hexi 50 is this one. 
and it's called, I think it's called Fort Lauder Lauderdale Nights and or Fort Lauderdale Lights. I can't remember. And I got it at Sheep Thrills in Florida. All of the rest of these, not all the rest, up until here, or maybe no, sorry, up until here are all Emma's yarn. I got a bunch of mini skeins. So let's go through them. Uh, this one is, hold on, uh, they're December 2020. No, no, no. This is Dancing and Prancing. It was a Christmas color. This one was their December 2023 special colorway. This one was Christmas Sprinkles. And I was doing these all like pretty quickly after Christmas. So that was fun. This one is Everglades, which was great because we went to the Everglades, which was so cool. This one is Bohemian Market, one of their first colorways that they ever dyed. This one is Happily Ever After, which is a Disney-inspired colorway. This one is called Shut the Front Door. Laura, who's the owner of Four Pearls, her front door is this color, and she said it's one of her favorites. And this one is called Yarn Husband, which is for um, JD, Laura's husband. So that was really cool. And then these three are pretty special because my friend, one of our Love and Stitches members that I got to meet, Jen, uh, gifted me these. These are all Florida yarns. She had them wound for me in little cakes, which was amazing because I hold the yarn, the fingering weight yarn double, and that helped me out a lot to be able to add those in. So, sorry, this one right here is a three by the sea colorway. I did, didn't have the color name. It's super beautiful and very Florida y. This one is also from Three by the Sea. And then this last one is from Mandy's Makings, who is also a Florida dyer. Again, I don't have the colorway name, but very bright and fun. And then finally, oops, I just clicked on this. Um, I have a yarn. Oh no, don't do that. I have a yarn from Georgia. Uh, we went to Savannah, Georgia and went to the Frayed Knot and I got this colorway, which is a Ryan yarn colorway, a Georgia dyer. This colorway, oh, I don't think I actually went back and got it. It's called something like, is it in here actually? It might be in here. Yeah, I have some cleaning up to do. Oh, perfect. Uh, so Ryan yarn. And this is the tree that owns itself which is something in Athens, Georgia, which I know is not where we were, but I thought it was something cool that was locally <laughs> locally made. And also in Savannah, there's all these beautiful uh, Spanish moss like hanging from the trees. So it just kind of reminded me of our time there with all of the greenery. So that that's it. We're all caught up again. I wanted to be caught up so that as we start to travel again at the end of this week, I can add in yarns as I go. I didn't get anything in South Carolina or North Carolina as far as hand dyed yarns. The stores that we went to just didn't seem to carry those things. And we're planning to go back to those states. We were moving through them extremely quickly and didn't have time to go to any other yarn shops. So hopefully I can get those added in at a later time. Lastly, I have a new project that I just started yesterday. I'm actually already probably going to tear it out and recast it on today, but it doesn't look like much. It's going to be a Rhinebeck Doodle by Jamie Lomax. So for the Love & Stitches membership this month, um, we are doing a doodle make along. So any type of color work is acceptable knitting or crochet, um, but specifically we're doing doodle patterns. So if you haven't heard of Jamie Lomax um, or Pacific Knitco. Sounds like I just dropped a stitch marker, which I probably did. Oh, I definitely did. Where did it go? It's the cutest stitch marker. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> I have a, a milk bone stitch marker from Simply Serving that I love. So it's actually on here, never mind. Um, but the doodles are something really cool where you can mix and match charts. I don't Think. It doesn't look like I brought down my cards. I bought um, the doodle deck, which is actually a deck of cards that has different color work charts on it, which is really, really fun. And each one is themed. So the Rhinebeck one is themed for Rhinebeck. It has like sweaters, hats, socks, um, skeins of yarn, 
uh, apples on it, and then other like beautiful motifs. I think there's leaves, all kinds of different things. So last night um, I was going through all of the cards and picking out which charts I liked the most. There are more in the cards and in the pattern if you get it digitally on Ravelry than you would possibly need in your cowl. And there's two options. You can do a single-sided cowl, which is like I don't know exactly how tall it is, but just one layer, or you can do an infinity cowl. So the motifs go this way around and you knit it in a tube, which is what I'm planning to do. So if it was single-sided, you would just have this, this is how you would wear it. But for infinity, it goes this way and it will make more sense when I have more of it. But I thought this would be warmer and also allow me to knit more of the motifs, which is really fun. Um, so the reason I'm probably gonna tear this out is I think it's hard to tell, and this is not really the best indication because I've only done like three rows, maybe not even that, but I think my color work is too loose. I'm kind of a loose knitter. I'm kind of loose for color work and it's looking really, really big. So I'm gonna go down a needle size and try that out and see how I like it. Uh, but something that I'm doing with this that I think is gonna be really fun is after I sorted out all of the charts that I wanted to work, I split them. It would have been helpful if I brought them down here. Mm, I don't want to show them too much because they're like part of the pattern property, but so I'll just describe them for now. Maybe I'll get them for next week. But I picked out the ones that are more like items, like sweaters and things like that, and I put them in one stack. And then I did the ones that are more like sort of a blendier technique, like maybe a leaf or maybe just a, a shapely thing that I thought would look good to alternate them. And then I had Kent, I had the two decks like I, that I'd sorted out and I had Kent pick one from each and then just stack them on top of each other. And now I have a stack of the doodles that I'm going to use, but they're all face down. So every time I'm ready for a new color work chart, I'm just gonna flip up the next one and pick out my colors and knit that. Um, so I have this doodle pack. It was the autumn doodle pack from fangirl fibers. So these are the first two colors that I'm working with. I'm making, I'm doing a sweater chart. And then these are the rest of my colors. This is all DK weight yarn. Um, I think it's like 116 yards each. There is a lot of dog hair on these. Man, <laughs> I don't know if this is from toaster or from my parents' dog, probably. Oh, you know what? It's cause I set it down on this towel which is where my mom brushed her yesterday. Ugh. I mean, Toaster gets dog hair everywhere too, but his is a little easier to pick out. Anyway, I think it's gonna be really beautiful. I'm excited to like restart this. I'm kind of glad I'm restarting it, not because I really particularly want to restart it, but it was a nice way to kind of practice and get into it. And then now tonight I can like really start with confidence. So I'm very excited to be doing some color work. It's been a while since I've done anything like that. And I think it will be a nice change of pace from the more like simple and repetitive color work blankets, or not color work, crochet blankets that I've been doing for the past couple of months. Toaster has decided to join us in here. So if you hear any barking, <laughs> he was barking outside of this bedroom door. So I let him in. Now he's over here sitting on the floor. So we'll see if he wants to stay in here. Um, I have purchased and received loads of yarn since I last saw you. So today we're having a special acquisitions segment. This won't always be in the podcast. It'll kind of be, you know, here and there as, as needed, I guess, as I get certain things. Um, so first I have received, I purchased this um, from Desert Vista Dye Works. This is my first Desert Vista Dye Works yarn, which I'm so excited. It's a self-striping colorway. I'm planning to make socks and it is called a court of dot, dot, dot. It's a, an a court of four thorns and roses colorway. I have been reading the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I started it last year and I have one book left in the series. I'm waiting to get it from the library. And I was kind of hoping that the timing of receiving the yarn would match up with me getting the last book from the library, but the yarn has arrived first, which is fine. Um, so I'm just gonna wait until my uh, book arrives from the library and then I'm gonna get this wound up and cast on some socks and I will read the book and knit the socks together. I don't know why that sounds like such a good idea to me. It just sounds really fun. So I am excited for that. Uh, I have received a ton of yarn from Pretty Twisted Yarns. I am an affiliate for Pretty Twisted Yarns. So I have a link down below that you can use at any time and at no additional cost for you. Um, the, whoops, your order, hold on, 
will also support me and it will there is a discount i can't i think it's on your first purchase but if you use the link it will automatically apply so uh teresa is doing something really cool this year and it's called the die hard club so it's spelled like this die you know like you die yarn die hard and this is the january club colorway so you should have already received this i think if you were in the january club this one was a set of five minis 20 gram minis that all go together and are going to be perfect for i don't know anything you want to do some stripy socks maybe a stripy hat let's see if you have five times 20, that's 100 grams. You could do a stripy muscle burrow hat. Um, you could do some color work, like we were just talking about the doodles. That could be really, really fun. So to sign up um, for this, let me see. There are inspiration photos that are shared on Instagram. So you can see there was all these cute little snowmen and then there's the colors. And then you uh, sign up on Teresa's website on Pretty Twisted Yarns, I'll have it linked. And you receive your fun, uh, color of the month. I believe February's is going to be a 100 gram skein of yarn. So it will change up month to month and you can get a special surprise in your mailbox. Um, she also sent me this set, which I think was from Christmas, but just to kind of show you like the depth of her tonals. There's, she's got so many different colorways and she's so precise. Um, this one was called Toyland which is fun. It came with some Christmas things. So that's why I think it's Christmassy, but I'm just now receiving everything that was sent to my parents' house. So I'm like, wait, when did this get here? <laughs> I don't know what time it was. And then the last thing I have, I'm going to keep this in the package. Um, she sent me a doodle kit. I'm going to show you from the back with some purples and pinks and a white. Um, this yarn, hey, Teresa, I'm just noticing, did you get a new label? This looks great, I love it. Um, so this is called the Pay It Forward Color Kit. Uh, one 100 gram skein, five 50 gram skeins um, from left to right. Okay, so from left to right facing me. So this one, can you all see that? You can't really see it that well. Okay, actually I don't wanna take it out because I don't wanna forget the colorway names. Are they labeled? Oh wait, they are labeled. <laughs> Wonderlust, hold on. Okay, so Wonderlust, this is purple. Uh, Careless Whisper. Let's see. Uh, Chronic Blushing. Temptation. And Desire. And then <laughs> this one's called Like a Virgin. I think I'm missing the reference here. I must not know what this means, <laughs> but I really like it. This is really fun. Um, this says, uh, oh, it says, hey, Natalie, I figure you already had a doodle pattern. <laughs> so this is for the doodle kit. So pay it forward, color kit, and Teresa always does these fun um, like inspirations. And then this one had a stitch marker in it. So thank you, Teresa. I love this. I'll be able to doodle, doodle all the way into February, which is great. Okay, set that down. Uh, next, let me see what I had next on my list for Kent so that I can keep things in order <laughs> for him. Okay, we went to the Sorella Yarn Studio. We are going to have this YouTube video up in February. Um, we got to meet Ashley. We got to meet the whole team. I got to interview Ashley. We went through the entire studio and saw all of the ways that they get color inspiration and dye, and it was so, so cool. Um, so we have a couple pictures to share from that. But then when I left, they gave me a box of so many fun things. And to be honest, I haven't had the chance to open it. So I thought we could open it together. I mean, I peeked inside, but that's about it. So um, thank you, Ashley, for this. This is super, super sweet. This, like, isn't their box just so cute when you order something from them? It's just the sweetest box. So you may know Sorella Yarn, dyes yarn, but did you know they also make knitting needle and crochet sets. And of course, they're Ashley's aesthetic. So they're pink and gold. Hang on, let me pull this one out of here. Um, I haven't gotten the chance, of course, to try the needles yet. They're still wrapped up in the package, but I thought I would show you what they look like. So they're rose gold metal needles. And 
rose gold finish on here. And then the crochet hooks are ro rose gold hooks and like blush pink handles. They're really pretty. We saw them um, in our video. Um, they also make hand creams and I have gotten hand cream from them before and it's great, but I didn't realize that they literally make them <laughs> there at the dye studio. They have these like kind of KitchenAid stand mixer looking things and they're making the hand creams and the wool wash there, which is so cool. So that'll be in the video. Uh, they also put together tea for a lot of their different kits and things. This one's called Mint Magic. It has spearmint, peppermint, dried orange peel, and cinnamon, which is, I told Ashley is perfect for me. I have tea almost every night and I usually have mint tea. And then last thing here is this beautiful yarn, uh, four skeins of it. So I think I can make myself like a really, really cute top. Um, it is her DK weight and I actually don't see a colorway name on this one. This is their Stellina DK. So it's like a light pink background with some um, brighter like pink and purple and bright blue and actually a little bit of yellow, which I definitely love. So shoot, I should have asked what colorway this is. It's so much fun though. So I can make something with this. What do you think I should make? I've been wanting to make myself more basic items that I can actually wear every day instead of wearing the same, like I like wearing the same t-shirts all the time because I have all these wool t-shirts that I can wear multiple times without washing, which is really great living in a small space. So I don't have to have 15 t-shirts. I can have like five of them, but I do want to wear my knitting as well because hello, I'm a knitter and a crocheter. So any ideas for four skeins of DK, let me know. Okay, uh, we also went to Oak City Fibers um, in Raleigh, North Carolina. We had so much fun there. We met so many people. It's a brand new yarn store that just opened November 1st, 2023. And Glenn is the owner and he is great. They are getting, they already look like a very well-established yarn store. Like you'd have no idea that they're about two months old. Um, they already have a great community there and they're getting in new yarns all of the time. But I ended up getting, where did it go, Toaster? Are you sitting on it, buddy? Where's my bag? Uh, I am so confused. Hold on, I found it. <laughs> I got this bag, which I'm gonna try to explain this as well as I can remember. Um, Glenn, the owner, was telling me that they are only one of, I think, two people in the US that carry these bags. They're from Amsterdam. It says, oh wow, Amsterdam on it. Um, I think they said the other shop is also in North Carolina at Black Mountain, but these are hand painted. So they're like splatter painted. And I really liked this one because it was super bright. And of course it was pink and it has pink um, cords on it, like really tough nylon cords. So I am going to be putting a project in here for sure later on when I get everything organized. So I'll have that shop linked down below. And then one more thing, <laughs> nope, two more things, sorry. Um, I then after Oak City, we went to lots of places in North Carolina. <laughs> we went to Black Mountain, which is somewhere I've been before many, many times, but not to their new location. And since Danny, the new owner has um, owned the shop, we had the loveliest time in there. We went to um, visit the shop, of course, but also because I wanted to meet up with one of our Love & Stitches members, Jill. Um, I wanted to meet her in person and we spent the afternoon together. We got lunch together, Kent was there too. And then we went into Black Mountain and they are dog friendly. So we got to bring Toaster inside and sit and hang out. Um, we spent hours there. It was such a lovely time, uh, we got to meet um, let's see, we got to meet Danny, the owner, and we got to meet um, Maggie, I believe, and Renee and hang out with them. And it was so fun. And they um, also sent me away with a little goodie bag, which was so nice. Actually, this is something that I bought. I got this, she already knows this, so I got this for my friend Amy. <laughs> Amy, I'm gonna be sending this to you. I had never seen um, a Hanukkah project bag before and Renee who works at Black Mountain makes these bags and she uses all kinds of different materials like she'll make a bag from um, Danny's son is uh, like a, a toddler and he had a cute little tracksuit and she made a bag out of the tracksuit and it looks so cool so I wanted to get one of her bags um, but I this one stood out to me so I got this one for Amy so 
there's that. I don't think there was another one like that, but I think there was another Hanukkah one. And there was some Hanukkah like um, yarn cozies. And then this is their store bag. And they have the Katrinkles little measuring thing that they gave me. What is that thing called? Gauge. <laughs> um, a sticker and a wooden stitch marker. See, I haven't even unpacked all this. Like I literally pulled this from the van. Oh, some treats for toaster. That was not from them. I put that in there. Um, a couple of markers, stitch markers for Valentine's Day. Oh my gosh, you know what? I can put those on my little kit from Pretty Twisted Yarns because that's very Valentine's Day E. Black Mountain Yarn Shop. A t-shirt with their logo on it. They have lots of different like, I think they had some sweatshirts and things too. And then the last thing we're gonna have to show you in black and white because it's not out yet. And they were so kind to give this to me. I didn't even know this was coming. I know that if you've been following them on Instagram, you'll know it's coming, but again, it hasn't been revealed. So black and white, please. Um, this is their store color from Spin Cycle. So I don't even know if the name has been revealed, so I'm not gonna switch that around yet, but I will give you a clue that I really like it. <laughs> Okay, we're putting it away. Um, so if you are um, a local to Black Mountain or you order from them online, be on the lookout because I think it's coming very soon. I think they're going to be sharing it. I can't remember. I think they said they were doing a trunk show or something. Um, as you can tell, information overload the past few weeks. So I apologize for not having the perfect details on everything, but I'm doing my best. Okay, one more thing. This is really cool. So this was sent to me by Liz. I got an email from Liz telling me about something called extreme knitting. And I was like, I am all ears. What is extreme knitting? So Betsy, yes, Betsy. Um, I think her name is Betsy Fitzpatrick. Uh, put together this movement called Extreme Knitting, where people are in really amazing, spectacular places and they are knitting, usually, actually, I think always outdoors. And they've put it together in a calendar. And this calendar, this, this proceeds from this calendar um, actually go to benefit two organizations. I'm going to show you the calendar, don't worry. Um, but let me, let me double check. Um, so let's see. 10% uh, of the net profits will be donated to the um, Brow Lodge Trust, which seeks to preserve hand knitting skills that are an essential part of Shetland's heritage, and the Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue, um, which helps locate and rescue missing and lost persons on Native American tribal lands. Um, so if that's not already a reason to support this, um, this is the calendar and it's really, really cool. Uh, I don't think there's space to put this in the van, but I am going to maybe just like hang it up somewhere here at my parents' house and like look at it when we're back. But anyway, let me show you. It's so cool. So this is uh, the, each each month kind of tells you a little bit about what's what's happening. So like here's January. They are on. <laughs> They are on a, a sled. Let's see. What does it say? Uh, Gretchen, the co-owner of Durango Dog Ranch, mushes the team while Betsy knits. Like, come on. Extreme knitting. Um, let's see. Let me show you just some of my favorite ones. Um, hold on. They're all really, really cool. This one is like a knitted fence, which is pretty cool. Um, it says, Anne um, Unsen stands next to a garden fence she created using fishing twine. Like what? Come on now. That's super, super cool. Hang on. Let me get to the next one. People on a kayak. <laughs> Let's see. I, and somebody in a plane. Like what? Extreme knitting. Like how do I get into this calendar? <laughs> I think Liz, who sent it to me, what did you say, Liz? Hold on. I'm looking at your email. I think you said... Um, you are in, what month are you in, Liz? I can't read it from that far away. <laughs> Let me bring it closer to me. Um, found you, Liz. Liz is here in September, standing up right here. Look, it looks like it's freezing. They are on top of Mount Huron in Colorado, which is 14,003 feet. 
in elevation. So I will put the link to this calendar down below. It's 30% um, off right now. It is a 2024 calendar, so you'll get tons of use out of it. Okay, that's all the things that have come into my possession over the past couple of weeks. We have been fortunate enough to come back to my parents' house every few months so far in our travels. We have been traveling for five months and I think we've come back maybe two times. We were here in July getting ready to leave. We left in August. We came back for a good chunk of November, like two weeks, and then we left again. And then now we're back in January. But this time is the last time we're gonna be here for at least six months maybe longer. So there's high stakes here for planning out my projects right now. So I am in the mindset of keeping things really simple when it comes to my projects. Having been on the road for a little bit now, I kind of have a better idea of what my time looks like. I am sometimes having way more time to knit because I'm sitting in the passenger seat. And sometimes I'm having way less time to knit because we are constantly on the move, driving, we're you know, filming and meeting people and it just doesn't always, you know, is, isn't always conducive to working on certain projects. So I'm trying to keep things really, really simple for this round, this chunk of the trip. And I also realized that along the way, I can obviously get more yarn for projects, but I do have some things already planned that I just wanna make sure I either bring with me or leave here at my parents' house in such a way that it will be very easy for my mom to grab it and mail it to me. Let me show you what we're working with here. You may have seen this on Instagram, but this is my yarn space. It's a pretty decently sized cubby, but it needs to do a few things. It needs to hold all of my needles and notions, which are in there. This little basket I need to kind of clear out. I've got some candles in there, but mostly it has stuff to block. And then I'm thinking I'll put my uh, leftovers in here like scraps and stuff. So it's not really using, you know, it's not really doing much right now, but it can go underneath this and they kind of stack together. It's very important to use all the vertical space. This also needs to hold all of my current projects while fingers crossed, leaving a little bit of space for me to shop along the way. Like any good plan, I have started with a brainstorm in my notebook. I do this most months. I haven't done it much since we started traveling, but I do really find that it helps me to get everything out of my brain and onto paper. And then I can prioritize which projects I'm actually interested in at the time rather than just working on whatever is convenient or easy. So I just wrote down a bunch of projects that I had in mind for just January one step at a time. So I know I wanna make some scrubbies for my mother-in-law. I'm going to be participating in a Love & Stitches membership swap where we make something for each other. I wanna start a Guardy Cardi, which is um, an advent project. So I wanna bring that with me. I have my travel blanket, of course, can't forget that. And then I have several pairs of socks. Kent socks that I already started on. I have the adventure socks from Wool & Women Fibers. We're gonna be doing a make-along for that. Um, it is a doodle make-along in the membership this month. So that's on the mind. I recently got some yarn uh, for their A Court of Thorns and Roses sock yarn that I want to bring with me while I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then I have this alpaca yarn I have in mind to make something with. So I wrote all of that out knowing that like full well, I can't work on all of this for the month. So let's just sit here and talk about what to bring and what to pack it. That's what I have on the next thing here. It says bring and pack it. So bring is obviously what I'm bringing with me in the van. And then packet is what I'm going to leave behind. What is that? <laughs> leave behind, but in some type of way, like I think I'm gonna put it in um, Ziplocs and label it. It will be very easy for my mom to pull and send to me. So 100% I'm bringing with me my travel blanket. That is not a question. Um, I also wanna bring the Guardi Cardi, um, Kent socks, my adventure socks, and my doodle. That's where I kind of stopped. And then I knew for sure that I am not going to be bringing my Battenberg blanket as much as I want to. As I explained in the project section, I'm waiting on more yarn for that and it just doesn't make sense to continue on with it when I don't have that. So let me take you inside and I'll show you how I've been getting organized. Okay, <laughs> I've been doing some serious work in here. This took way too long to show on camera because I was getting everything organized that we could possibly have. Hey, Toaster. So let me just show you. I basically got all of my projects out 
And this is what we landed on for what I'm gonna bring with me. Actually, I'm still undecided about that one, but I got them all out. I laid them all out kind of like this right here. Then I started figuring out what project bags to bring because this is something I also wanna make sure that I have a good variety of, a variety of and things that are going to make sense for what I'm doing. So let's just start with the travel blanket because first and foremost, this has to come with me. This is the blanket that I am gathering yarns for and adding in as I go. So I got it all cleaned up. I had like all kinds of leftovers in there. So this is all ready to go tucked in here. I've also got my little pouch with my crochet hook in this in here. I like to do that because I find I always lose my crochet hook if it's not like in place with my knitting needles they are in the project. So I don't lose them, but crochet hooks I do. And then I also put, sorry, I feel like I keep rubbing the microphone. I also put in here the uh, tapestry needle and like little scissors so that it's very easy for me to work a hexi, finish up the end, and then it's all good to go. I'm caught up on this right now. So there's no yarn in here. This is going to take up a large portion of that cubby, but it's very important, so I can't leave without it. Maybe you can help me out with this one because I'm not really sure what to do. I am definitely going to bring this project bag because it is the Greatest Yarny Adventure project bag and also the yarn that goes with it. And by the way, as I'm packing everything up, I am writing a to-do list in here of things that I want to wind or maybe organize or get extra tools for. I have most of my tools with me, but for example, this, I wanna go ahead and take a picture of it as is and then wind it and have it in here. That way I don't have to mess with hand winding it on the road or asking a yarn store if I can borrow their winder because that makes me feel really awkward, especially if they don't know who, like know me or anything. If I like know them, then I'm like, okay, it's cool. But if I don't, then I'm like, feel weird about asking them to use their winder. So I'm definitely bringing these two projects or uh, sorry, these two items, but I have a pair of socks I already started for Kent that I definitely wanna bring. And then I have this yarn, this is the Accord of Thorns and Roses that I also wanna bring. And it doesn't really make sense to bring a project bag for each one. So I don't know if you could see on my notebook, I was placing stars or like little asterisks next to my things to bring. These were the things that I had in mind to bring a project bag for as well. Like the travel bag has, or travel blanket has its own project bag. But for these socks, I'm going to work them one at a time, at least I hope. So I think I may just use the same project bag for each one. So I think that I'm gonna just put this one in here for now. I, I wonder if I do want like a smaller project bag that's a little bit easier to bring with me. This one's pretty large. Maybe, this is why I need help. Maybe I will store this future project, this future project. Again, I need to take photos and wind them and then have an additional bag for this one. Let me know what you think because I'm still gonna be doing this when this video comes out on Thursday, so you can let me know. Uh, one thing that's already good to go is my doodle. So I started this project, actually you saw it um, already where I started it. I've already ripped it out and worked more on it. So here you go, sneak peek of what you're gonna see next week. But I got this into a float tote because it just makes color work so much easier. And I thought too, after I work on this project, I am gonna be going into my Guardi Cardi, which I have a lot of yarn for. I have an entire advent plus five skeins of Surrey. I think that it's going to be easiest for me to work that project in the float tote because I'm gonna have two yarns at least at a time. I might have more. So for now, see, I'm trying to just keep things super limited. I don't wanna have too many project bags, but I wanna have what I need. So for now, I'm thinking that this project bag will work for my Guardi Cardi, but I'm gonna to add to my list winding these skeins of Surrey. I don't think I'm gonna wind these ones yet. I need to figure that out. And then they may just stay in plastic bags in the bin, in the overhead bin. I kind of think it is like an overhead bin, like an airport or an airplane. Um, they may just stay in the plastic bags. Uh, one other variable is that I just got this project bag and I freaking love it. Um, so maybe I will store some of this stuff in here. And then that way, when it comes to starting my next project, I can pick, do I wanna use this? So I wanna use the float tote and I'll have like an extra project bag in a sense. And then I'm thinking about 
bringing this yarn as well. One of my goals for this year is to make myself a matching hat, cowl, and glove set. So I have a pair of gloves that is this exact alpaca. Um, it is from, I got it at Rhinebeck, American made alpaca. The gloves are already made, they were machine made, but then I wanted to get matching yarn. And so I thought I might start myself a muscle burrow hat maybe. I don't know how much yarn it will use because this one has 300 yards. So I might use one skein for a muscle burrow, one skein for something around my neck and have a matching set. But the question is, do I want to bring that with me now I mean, it would kind of make sense because the sooner I get it done, the sooner I can wear it and it's winter. Or do I want to set this up in a plastic bag for my mom? I need to think about that. I have landed on a small to-do list of things to do. I need to find a small sock project bag, wind and photograph my wool and women fibers, wind and photograph Desert Vista Dye Works, wind and photograph my Suburban Stitcher. I like to photograph skeins in full to use as my like first photo on my project page and then decide if I want to bring this alpaca yarn and if so I need to wind it so I'm going to go do those things and then I will meet you back in the van the checklist is now complete and I brought everything down to the van I spent some time here uh, winding yarn, then I had some lunch, then I wound some more yarn, then I cleaned the van, then I wound some more yarn. It took me a lot longer <laughs> to wind the yarn than I thought. The sun's already starting to set, but granted it does start to set at about four o'clock here, which is, um, I don't like that at all. I'm excited to get maybe a little further west into the time zone and get some more sun. Um, but anyway, we're going to see how everything now fits up in the cabinet. Um, I don't think there's anything too exciting to share. I do have a thought about this project. I'll get to that in a second, but I wound four skeins, left one unwound just in case I don't need it. I have my two upcoming sock projects in this bag and I put them all in yarn cozies because they're going to be sitting for a while. Um, and I didn't actually have any yarn cozies like ready to go. I, so I decided I better put them on some of my projects. So these are all yarned cozied up with the tags in them and everything trying to stay a bit more organized more like I used to so this is basically a bag that's just ready for new projects later on I found my favorite sock project bag so I'm going to be working on that and then I did decide to bring the alpaca yarn so I wound that up and I put it in this project bag because I really wanted to bring it also there is a variable that I forgot about I want to make sure to bring this. This is not a knitting related thing. I mean, it kind of is because I use this when I'm knitting and reading in the morning. And I haven't been doing very much knitting and reading while we've been traveling because a lot of mornings we just have to get up and go. It takes us so long to reset the van that that kind of takes away from any of the time I usually have to sit and knit in the morning. And you may say, why don't you just get up earlier? Well, we usually are driving pretty late into the night, a lot of nights. Um, I would say at least three to four days a week, we are still driving at 10 p.m. So we don't really get to bed that early. <laughs> so my whole schedule's changed. I'm still figuring it out, but I do wanna prioritize um, my knitting and reading time in the morning. It just starts my day off on such a better note. So the best place for this to go is in this cabinet. So I need to leave a little bit of space for this. So not much more to discuss. Let's see what fits. I don't know exactly how well you could see there while I was actually packing it up, but as you can see now, it is quite full. I mean, there is like squish space, but it's really important to me this time that we leave that all of my projects fit. A lot of times what I've had before is like my current project will have to sit out of the basket and only like other things fit in here. And I don't want that. I want to be able to put everything away at night uh, but as you can see here I was not able to get all of this yarn for this project in here which brings me to my last thing. In the spirit of simplifying things and not being overwhelmed not bringing too much I really just want to bring projects that I am currently working on for the most part and I just know for myself that I can only handle one complex project at a time. So I already knew that when I started my doodle, I was going to work on this until I 
finish it before starting my Guardi Cardi, which is gonna be like a more complex project. I have other things going on that are more simple, but this is not something I'm going to be starting right away. So I think what will be best is to leave this somewhere where my mom can very quickly package it up and mail it to me when I'm ready. And by that point, I'll be done with my doodle. And not that this is gonna completely go away, but it can sort of replace, one can replace the other, I hope. <laughs> We'll see. Um, so this is going to stay behind at least for now. And then the other one that I have packaged up, I did talk about a little bit earlier. It just says on the front, a homespun house. And inside is everything I need for my Battenberg blanket, except for the two yarns or two skeins that I'm waiting on. So it's got the blanket in it. It's got all the squares that I've made. It's got my extra skeins for now. And then once that comes, I'll have my mom mail it to me. So not bringing these two things even though they're sort of ongoing upcoming whips is huge. I mean, you can see how quickly that space filled, especially with my travel blanket in there. So that's just the reality of things. Um, maybe I can squeeze some more space. That's not true, I can't, there's just no way. <laughs> it is what it is. I will have to uh, get my whips down a little bit more, but I want to bring at least this stuff for now. And I'm always growing and improving things. So we'll see how it goes. That's it for the first little in our travel segment. I hope you enjoyed it. We have new stuff coming every single week. It won't always be something in the van. Hopefully we'll be able to show you a lot more of the things that we are out and about exploring. Now, since we're gonna be sharing more vlog style things from traveling, I'm not gonna spend as much time as I have in the past talking about these life segments, but I feel like there's gonna be so many things we can't quite fit into the vlog that I wanna just do like a quick highlight. So please enjoy these highlights and these photos of our last couple of weeks. Um, so we spent some time in Florida in the Everglades National Park, and we got to see an alligator literally at the very end. You might've seen that in Vlogmas. Um, we got to meet up with some of our members in Orlando um, and knit together at Panera, which was so fun. Um, on our way out of Florida, uh, Kent surprised me with my friend Charles from New York, who was down in St. Augustine visiting his family. We walked into a coffee shop and Charles was just there and I got so excited. Um, so we got to spend a couple of hours hanging out with him, knitting and crocheting. Um, we went to the Frayed Knot in Savannah, Georgia, which was a lot of fun. Uh, got a little Instagram reel uh, filmed there if you want to see what the store looks like inside. It's really, really sweet. We spent a lot of time walking around Savannah in the early morning on, I think it was a Saturday, and just kind of enjoying all of the different squares and walking along the river. Uh, we went to Congaree National Park in South Carolina, I believe, and we walked a pretty long for us trail, about three miles with toaster on a boardwalk. It was beautiful and it was fantastic to get outside. Uh, we stayed in the sesquicentennial, I think is how you say it, but I think you can just shorten it to sesqui um, state park, which was a great place to stay. We camped, uh, we camped there, sorry, I think I got just a dog hair on me. Um, we camped there for three nights, um, staying in our van. Uh, and Kent during that time was practicing uh, building a fire. You may have seen when we were in Grand Canyon that we were trying to uh, like roast hot dogs over a brand new fire and they kept turning out super smoky and not tasting good. Well, I think we finally mastered the fire. The last night Kent made the hottest fire I have ever seen. It was so warm and toasty, even though it was in the forties outside, it was great. We also set up and worked outside for a little bit while we were there and took another really long walk around the lake. It was beautiful. Um, we went to Copious Fibers in Columbia, South Carolina and went to the knit night there and got to meet Missy and Catherine, the store owners, which was wonderful. And then we went to Smoky Mountain National Park. We also, we had Toaster with us. We did not do any trails there because we had Toaster with us and because we were a little bit short on time heading back to Tennessee, um, but it was a really great time. We're gonna end the podcast with what is coming up. We have lots of events coming up, lots of things that we're gonna be at. And so I'm gonna share these on the screen so that you can like 
you know, take a picture or something if you're in the area and come, please come and meet us at these different shops. We're, we're so excited to be planning a little bit more ahead of time so that we can actually share this with people and hopefully see you there if you're nearby. Uh, so first things first, we put out a new video this week from Eat Sleep Knit. It is a store in Dallas, Georgia, which is semi in the Atlanta area, about an hour, I would say, from the city center. And it's an amazing store. You can shop there online. It's great. Go check that out. And next week, we will have our second store tour video of the year uh, for Pearl's Yarn Shop in Winter Haven, Florida, which is the home of Emma's Yarn. So that one's really interesting too. Now, here is where we're going to be over the next couple of weeks. This upcoming weekend on Saturday, January 13th, we are going to be at Paper Crane Yarns in Calera, Alabama. Um, we will be filming a tour there, but also staying around for their like weekly um, stitching time from 12 to 2 o'clock. Um, then we will be the following week. You want a treat, buddy? <laughs> I got these treats out for him. Uh, the following week, we will be in Mississippi, in Gulfport, Mississippi, at Wool Market Fibers. Um, we will be there on Thursday, January 18th from roughly noon to 3. Uh, then we will be at Yarny Gras in New Orleans, Louisiana. This is a, an event put on by India Entangled. Um, the event is on Saturday, January 27th from 12 to three o'clock, but it's a one hour time slot. So it's actually a free ticket. I'm not sure how many are still available, um, but since we are going to film there, we went ahead and got uh, times for all three time slots. So we will be there the whole time. So we don't have like a specific come and meet up with us or anything for that, but if you see us, um, please say hi. Uh, last thing, we're gonna be at Arkansas Yarn Co. in Malvern, Arkansas. Um, we have not finalized uh, this event yet, but we are planning for it on Saturday, February 3rd. So time TBD, there will be um, tickets for this event because there's going to be some goodies and food provided. So more information will be coming from Arkansas Yarn Shop and I'll make sure to share all of that too. Thanks for tuning in to this extra long episode. I hope you enjoy our new segments. It's going to be a really amazing 2024 and I cannot wait to just share everything that we're doing, meet people around the United States. I feel really blessed to um, be doing what we're doing this year. It's really exciting. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.